want to see the blind eyes open and the, and the deaf can hear and the dumb can speak. The lame can hear. Well, right there's a song about it. That the lame are going to walk. We believe this or we just say it. We're waiting for it out in the future or do we feel like we can lay hands on Don and Don can hear. I believe that. I feel like a lot of times as Christians we've been kind of passively sitting back waiting for God to do some crazy thing, but I feel like God is sitting up there saying, you know, you're waiting, well, you're, you're waiting for yourselves. We are the ones that are supposed to take the action, to, to make that move. God gave us that authority. Yes. The Bible says so. He gave us the power. We don't yes. command God, but we command that spirit of God that he put inside of us. And that's what that's what helped Jesus perform all those miracles. So we we are what's supposed to be moving. We're not supposed to passively sit back and wait for God to do something. We have to go out and try to reach these people. Because if people have needs, God wants to fill those needs. It's almost selfish of us not to try to reach those people. Because we have the power that can set them free spiritually, physically. I mean we 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 really have said so many times, oh, it'd be great to see the, the deaf healed. Well, that man's got 100% hearing loss in one ear. He's deaf in one ear. Right. And that's, I mean, no, we, we've already seen physical miracles. Like, we've already seen concrete miracles. Chelsea had a dairy allergy. Couldn't eat it. She can now. She can eat it all she wants to. I mean, it was serious. She can. That other lady who couldn't lift her arms up because she was having such bad arthritis pain. Right before our eyes, before she was healed. Eyes. And she can lay or raise her hands up. Oh, Rachel, peanut allergy, but the yeah. worst of the worst. I doubt she's eating peanuts yet, but I know 100% that she's healed. She's gotten close to peanuts, uh, she said, and been perfectly fine. And I know that God is going to continue doing this. I mean, with Tina's leg, He's going to keep moving and healing. It's time for Christians to step into that power that He has for you. I mean, because it's there for you. It's a gift. It's freely given. It's not like it's something that you have to beg God for and get on your knees and just, and just beg and, and pine and, just, and, and try to search after. It's something that if you are following after God with all your heart yes. and believe and have that faith, yes. it, you have it within you. Oh, yes. You don't have to receive some sort of something. If you've received Him, you've received healing. And you can and you can perform that. Thank you, you can God. carry out those acts that He would have us do. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm literally looking for the next opportunity that I see, and I, I would never want anyone to get hurt. But like the next opportunity, to see someone hurt, or see someone who's physically hurt, or even spiritually, if God told me to. But just then, I'm looking for the next opportunity. That I could go up to someone and say, hey, can I pray for you? And pray for them right there. And then get up and walk away perfectly fine. That's how you're going to show some testimony of the power God has. Because, I mean, it's great to show the love and the testimony of, you know, being a good Christian to somebody. But there is nothing stronger than that. Than, I know you're supposed to have faith and believe in what you can't see. But there's nothing more convincing than when people see the power of God and work in action. Remember what we talked about Wednesday night when Paul was trying to preach to was it the governor he was preaching to and there was that sorcerer, the evil sorcerer following him around and trying to prevent the governor from hearing the truth of his preaching. And Paul turned around and basically just, he made the man blind, didn't he? Did he was that the man stricken with blindness? Mm -hmm. Eli must the sorcerer? And when, when the governor saw what God did there, the governor believed. He turned. People hear the word, sometimes they'll hear the word after they see a manifestation of God's power. People say, "Don't well, we're not supposed to chase signs and wonders. No, we're not. They're supposed to follow after us to the point that people who see those signs and wonders following after us say, I want to hear the word of God. What have they got to say? Because I just saw something I can't explain naturally. So they must have something they need to tell me. They will listen to you. Oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's what we want is them to hear the word. Most important thing
thing is that they be saved. That's the key. So if we're moving in the, the authority and the power God's given us, they're going to see things they can't explain. They're going to feel things about us that they can't explain. Then they will listen. Often Jesus would meet their needs first. Moved with compassion. He would heal. Then they'd sit and listen to his word. Oh, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I can't praise you enough, Lord. You brought us together here this morning. We're going to lift you up. We're going to praise you. We're going to give you all the glory. We're going to encourage each other. We're going to gird up one another with the unity of the brethren so that when we go out, God, that we're going to be closer to you, stronger in you, stronger in faith in you. And we're going to be looking for those opportunities. Because they're all around you. They're all around you. That people need prayer. Like he said, you don't want anybody to get hurt. But in this fallen world, you're going to see stuff. And if you're on the scene, you're like the God EMT. You really are. You're like the EMT in the spirit that God's put right there to pray. You don't have to go lay hands on it, but you can if you feel it. You can speak the word. And I believe that when I do that, if somebody's hurt, they're going to get healed immediately and Ooh, see that yes. relief. But even if they don't, it's I think a lot I think a lot of times in the thing that's helped me back in the past is thinking, well, what if I go and pray for them to be healed and they aren't healed and they have to go home and go to the doctor or something? Even even if that if they don't see the immediate healing, you still believe for that healing for them and have yes. faith for that. But even if it's just a prayer, think of what that prayer could do for them. Think about what you reaching out, showing that you care enough to pray. Right. That that could work. That could be the healing that they need. Thank you, God. You don't know what a person needs, mm. and maybe it's just you reaching out that's going to touch them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can't touch people. I was laying in bed the other night praying for chips, and I want to come in, chips. Or the faith that she had and that she had concerning her allergy, also Rachel. Because let me tell you, she, if you had not reached out in faith, that could have killed you, what you did. You know, you had such a severe, very allergy. But she believed, she had faith to take in that dairy, knowing before that she ended up in emergency room. Telling you that it takes faith. Rachel being around peanuts, it takes faith. I tell you, you know, that's to me that's great faith. How many of us, if we knew that whatever we ingested was gonna kill us? Now that's not being foolish. Not in their case. That is faith. It would be foolish in many cases. It, it yeah, would, it but I don't believe not it. in theirs. Not in theirs. I, that took a tremendous amount of faith. And I just thank God for that. I thank God. You know, there's a lot of ways you reach out and minister to people, and we want to reach out in all those ways. You know, a lot of times people are one-sided. These people believe that all they do is just pray for people and believe for miracles. They don't do anything else. They don't take somebody food when they need. You know, that's we've got to move in the middle, the old paths where we do it all. You got churches that all they do is minister to the needs of physical, physical things. You know, they make sure the hungry's got food and somebody's got shelter. That's important. That's big. But they need to be moving over here, too, where they're meeting needs and seeing people delivered and set free and healed. We, we all need to be bringing it all together. 